Hey, what's up YouTube? Today you're getting a six month review on the Pit Boss Pro 1100. Plus, at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you my biggest regret about this grill. Check it out. All right, let's start off with some cons. Con number one is the vertical space or the lack thereof, right? So the Pit Boss Pellet Grill comes with a top rack, which I've never used. Um, I may have had it on there for the first smoke, but um, I've pulled it off since then and never used it again. Um, there's not many things that I cook that are very, very tall. However, reaching the back of the grill with that top grate on is not very convenient. So with that grate off, there's, there's enough space. If you get a big enough turkey or you try to put a little pig in there, you'll probably touch the top of the, the smoker. So that's con number one is vertical space. Not that much space. Moving on to con number two, and that is the grates. The grates that come with the Pit Boss is a, a cast iron grate with like a ceramic coating. Mine actually failed after searing some steaks. Um, I know that Pit Boss will replace the grates. I've, I've seen other folks talk about it on different blogs that I'm in, but I wanted to upgrade. So I, I went ahead and bought this stainless steel set that I found on Amazon. There's gonna be a link down below in the description if you wanna order your own set. I think they were 55 bucks and I've had no problems with them since. So a con, but one that's easily fixed. All right, con number three, and that's that it's not a PID controlled auger. Let me explain what that means. So there's two types of controllers that we've seen in, pit, in pellets or pellet smokers so far. One is a time-based controller and the other is the PID. So for a time-based controller, which is what the Pit Boss 1100 Pro has, is depending on uh, the setting of temperature that you put your, your pit on, the, the computer knows to run the auger for X amount of time and then pause for X amount of time to maintain the temperature that you want. Um, it doesn't go based off any kind of reading from inside the pit. A PID controller, on the other hand, uses the probe that's in the grill that monitors temperature and based off that temperature controls the auger to maintain your target temp. So I wish this one had a PID controller, but it doesn't. I've heard that the newer Pit Boss model, models do have PIDs, so you may want to check those out. Con number four, and that's pellet voids. So this was a new phenomenon to me when I first got my pellet grill. I'm used to smoking on a Weber Smoky Mountain where you feed charcoal and you feed wood and you don't have to worry about it. Um, there is a situation where your pellets, hold on, let me put that down your pellets kind of line up on top of the hogger and create a little void underneath. So there's no wood, if you will, feeding the fire and you get what's called a flame out. It's not a huge problem. You just got to come out every 30 or 45 minutes and kind of stir your pellets up. So that way that you ensure there's no void. But that is one of the cons uh, about owning a pellet grill. All right, moving on to con number five and actually one of the biggest ones for me and that's having to clean out your ash pot. Now, I'm used to having to do maintenance on a, on a smoker. I've had the Weber Smoky Mountain, which you have to take the coals out when you're done using and, and clean up the ash there. It's just, in, in my opinion, more of a pain in this pellet smoker to do it. You first have to remove your three grates. Then you have to remove the searing grate, remove your heat deflector, and then you can find your ash pot and vacuum it out. I just wasn't that keen on doing that process every single time. So I did an upgrade to my smoker. You're seeing a, a clip of it right now. Makes it much easier to clean out the ash pot. Now again, I've heard that Pit Boss has heard this complaint from many customers and the newer models have a easier way to clean out the ash pot where you basically do it from underneath the grill. You kind of unscrew the ash pot, it drops out and then you could vacuum that out. I don't have it in this pit, so I did the upgrade that you, that you just saw in that clip. All right, moving on to con number six, and that is the difference in the smoke taste that you get. So you have to remember, I did about six years of smoking on a Weber Smoky Mountain, right? A, a charcoal smoker with actual wood chunks, and I got used to that smoke. The smoke that comes off of a pellet grill is a little different. It's actually a cleaner smoke, so it, it's got less of a strength to it. It's still really good. You can still taste the smoke. It's just different. And I wasn't expecting that when I first got this pellet grill. So I would say that's my con number six and the last con on this list. While we wait and let that rum kick in, before we jump to the pro list, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. 
All right, let's move on to some of the pros before I tell you my biggest regret. Pro number one, I think it's obvious, but in case it's not, pellet grills have a, a sort of a set it and forget it type of mentality that comes with it, right? So in the past on my Weber Smoky Mountain, I'd have to make sure that I'm tending my fire, adding more wood. Uh, for really long smokes, I'd have to add more charcoal, right? Um, open and close uh, air vents depending on temperature swings, right? All that stuff. For this guy here, it's super simple, right? I set it to 250 and I walk away. I gotta come back every once in a while and, and stir the pellets, but I'm usually spritzing anyway and it's a good time to spritz and stir your pellets. So that's a, a pro in my opinion. There's no tending to a fire, right? I turn it on, set it to the temperature that I want, and, and don't worry about it anymore. Pro number two is the uh, cooking space, right? So it's an 1100 Pro, which, stand, which is 1100 square inches of cooking surface. That's including the top grate, which I don't use. Um, it, it kind of messes with my vertical space, which was one of my cons that we just talked about. But the cooking surface is fairly large. Um, I like to put a, a, a water pan in the middle, right where the, where the heat source is, to keep the air kind of humid. I think that's better for smoking. Again, that's probably a carryover from my Weber Smoky Mountain days. Um, with that in place, I can still very, very easily put on four racks of ribs and, and not have a problem. Um, and for ribs, if you really want to get technical, you don't need a lot of vertical space. So I could add that top shelf again and probably put up another two, two and a half racks. So there's plenty of cooking space. I haven't had any issues with running out of space. That's been good. Pro number three of owning this Pit Boss 1100 Pro is the pellet hopper size, right? I forget exactly what it is. It's a 20 pound or a 30 pound hopper, but you can fill it up to the top and at 250 degrees, you could expect to get 12 to 14 hours of smoke time. No problem. It's really, really convenient. Pro number four of owning this pellet grill is the customer support. I really got to give it to Pit Boss. I've called them two or three times, really more with questions than anything, and they've been very responsive, very helpful, and have been very insightful on what to do about my pit. Also, from reading the different blogs that I'm in, a lot of folks call with um, defects that happen on their pit, and Pit Boss makes it right. So thank you, Pit Boss, for your great customer service. All right, let's talk about my biggest regret, and then I'll tell you if I recommend this grill or not. Back in the days of smoking on my Weber Smoky Mountain, I heard about pellet smokers. I did a little bit of research and thought, man, that'd be really fun, let's get one. But the ones I wanted were about five or 600 bucks. I mean, the nicer ones are over a thousand, right? The different brands, right? And I just didn't want to spend that kind of money, so I held off, and I held off, and I waited, and I waited. And after about a year and a half of debating, I finally bought one. And I, it's been great. I, I, I really love owning this pellet smoker. So my biggest regret is not buying one fast enough or, or early enough, right? I should have bought one as soon as I wanted one. I have to say that owning a Weber Smoky Mountain for six years before I got this pellet grill, I smoked less than I do now. I use this thing once, sometimes twice a week. I'm always smoking something and it's great. So if you've been thinking about buying a pellet smoker, you should do it. Buy one today.